Good afternoon, good evening students, I hope you're doing good, welcome back to the channel. Today we're back with another lecture concerning literature for third year students. As you can see, it will be about realism as a movement that is included within Victorian the Victorian literature. Before I start, of course, as usual, I invite you to like the Facebook page of this channel in order to be notified whenever I post something new, of course. And also, you can contact me there if you have um, any further questions. With that being said, you can subscribe to the channel as well. That would encourage me to do more videos and help you out during the period of exams. Now, Victorian literature, we shall start with the timeline of Victorian literature that is between 1837 and 1901. Realism, on the other hand, uh, a movement, an artistic movement that is included inside Victorian literature was or emerged in 1861 and ended in 1914. It started in France during the 19th century, of course, in 1861. Um, and the writers of that movement, they were interested in let's say, given details or realistic details and concrete description about the, let's say, the actual uh, living conditions of the people at that time. In order to get to the living conditions, we need to know why these living conditions are like that or were like that. Anyways, we shall start with a quick background, historical and social background about the period of um, Queen Victoria in England, more precisely. This is why it is called Victorian literature, by the way. We shall start speaking about the advancement in technology. I'm going to do this briefly because we are interested more in uh, something that is related to literature that, rather than history. But you need to know these facts in case you don't know them yet in order to understand the, let's say, the um, those poor living conditions. So we had the advancement in technology. For example, the steam engine was um, invented thanks to technology and it was also the age of expansion. Before we uh, carry on with the expansion, you should know that during that period was it was the industrial revolution. So they wanted to improve the industry to make it easier to um, let's say produce uh, a better um, product. Anyways, uh, so speaking of age of expansion, this, this, let's say this expression was encouraged by the philosophy of Charles Darwin, who also encouraged the scramble for Africa in 1889. This, uh, pact or, or this, um, agreement between the powerful empires of that time to go to Africa and colonize the countries because According to Charles Darwin, um, and uh, I'm paraphrasing of course, he said that uh, the Africans were uh, more likely to be savages and waiting to be ruled, governed and colonized. This is, let's say, um, a motive for the strong empires of that time, of European empires of course, to come to Africa and, let's say, uh, colonize uh, the, uh, these African countries. So why did they want to expand their empires? So like I said, it was the age of industrial revolution. Who says industry? Says raw materials. Raw materials are, let's say, um, an important, uh, let's say, an important, they, they had an important value. People could pay for uh, these raw materials, but these empires decided to colonize these poor countries in Africa and take the raw materials by force. This is why they wanted to expand the empire, in order to be powerful, strong, and also to uh, make it easier for them to improve their industry. Anyways, since we have this industry, we have these raw mater materials that are brought to the European continent. Um, so there is an increase in terms of uh, the working hand. Who says that? Says the ex exploitation, exploitation of uh, workers. So if you exploit workers, 
This will lead to poverty. This will lead to child labor as well. Like I said, Charles Dickens, who is a famous writer of that movement, was there right to denounce the Victorian reality, okay? And the destruction of society of that time. He described the life of the poor and the rich was um, divided into class classes. So we have like the uh, the rich, the poor, the poor were the uh, the working hand, the workers, the working class, and these poor people were exploited by those who are powerful, those who um, are let's say uh, in charge of this industry and all. So realism as a movement is there to depict to detail in a realistic way the fact of uh, people or British people and also the European uh, countries as well because they suffered from the same uh, disease between brackets of course the uh, these writers like Charles Dickens were there to denounce the fact that many people were living in poverty uh, and also were exploited by the rich. This is the historical and the, um, the social background of that uh, period. Now, we move to, uh, let's say, characteristics. Uh, we have something that we call mimesis, which means to imitate or the imitation or to depict reality as it is. It's like when you are reading something that was um, written during that period, you are going to imagine things as they were. There is no exaggeration or something. They were just depicting reality as it is, whether it's good or bad. And in this case, of course, it's bad, according to Charles Dickens and other um, authors or writers of that time, like George Eliot or Leo Tolstoy. They all wrote things uh, similar. Anyways, this is the first characteristic that we can mention. And, of course, literature of that time, or realism, had a moral purpose. Which means, um, you know, generally, like Romanticism, it is art for art's sake. I mean, they just write for art's sake. But the literature of that time had a moral purpose. They wanted to change um, th that, that uh, let's say, that bad image of society. So it was also uh, considered to be um, the age of great ideals. It's not idealism. It's not the same thing. It means if you look deep into that society, you will find that truth, for example, justice or brotherhood, uh, we cannot find these, uh, let's say, um, facts. Truth was absent, of course. Justice, even more, and let alone brotherhood. Because everyone, it was like free for all. Everyone is trying to save themselves, to work as hard as they can in order to get money. But they were all living in a horrible uh, living conditions. Anyways, another characteristic is... Um, it's the fact that it detailed realistic and factual, um, let's say, descriptions. They couldn't add something of their own into their writings because that would make things not real. They needed to keep it real in order to move the readers because they were concerned as well. They wrote those, let's say, um, literary works in order to move the readers and maybe push them towards a change. Anyways, they use imagery to present events and social conditions. Imagery is the same thing as to uh, depict things um, as they are, but the real meaning of imagery is the fact that when you're reading, it's like you're visualizing the whole scene. It's so true because the readers were concerned of those living conditions. So when they are reading something concrete, something real, that 
they know they already know about it makes them visualize the whole thing especially if they um they endured the same problem for example and uh the most important thing as well this kind of literature recreates life in literature it is so concrete so true um so uh, because they, they relied on fidelity and actuality their purpose was to recreate life of that period of that spe um, specific society in literature and of course it is the opposite of idealism and nominalism idealism um is to see things in a perfect way realistic writers did not see uh let's say life from that perspective it doesn't deal with the future for example it deals only with here and now they they do not use um foreshadowing for example they do not give you um let's say the um uh, the glimpse of the future because they they are realistic they do not know whether they are going to reach that future with those uh living conditions and all those uh or everything that characterized society at that time you see uh, with uh the uh, the thing of here and now you can say that the events are chronologically ordered okay and of course the purpose was to affect the reader and the reader's life because they were um they were included they enjoyed or they had the same experience and of course they used characters of everyday life they do not bring a character out of the ordinary uh they just bring you uh, or they, they just use characters um that we or they encountered in their everyday life nothing special about them they all lived in the same bad living conditions and i insist about the bad living conditions of that time because it was horrible there was sickness death um uh let's say the um urbanization was let's say the most uh important reason that led to this anyways the characters of that time are usually um round okay and to have a round character is to be dynamic meaning the personality of the characters might change or changes from now and then because in realism we have many plots in the story because we are depicting reality and every individual is having his own or uh, her own story so when you talk about um round characters you might see this character in the morning has this kind of personality but in the evening or at night things went bad for that character then um they will change their personality this is about round characters and of course they relied on empirical stuff something that you need uh, to see to uh, experiment and not based on faith uh, and all and of course most importantly we have the emphasis on morality this is very important because the reason why they wrote that kind of um literature or that kind of uh, artistic works because they had a purpose not for art but to try to make a change they depicted the sad reality maybe people are going to be moved and try or to be uh they will be pushed uh, towards something that might change their lives anyways to um round off with the characteristics and the purpose of this um literature or this movement realist writers they show they do not tell which means they used a lot of imagery even though the, the reader is reading but like i said they visualize the whole scene so this is why we say that um let's say uh realistic writers show and they do not tell anyways now we move to some um let's say prominent writers that um that wrote during that period such as charles dickens 
George Eliot and Leo Tolstoy. Charles Dickens, for instance, focused on life in the city and he is famous for providing a view of English society across a spectrum of classes. That is to say, he depicted the life of the very poor and the very rich at the same time. And especially in London, he is the famous writer of the novel Hot Times and he also wrote Great Expectations. He wrote The Life and Adventures of Nicholas uh, Nickleby or Nickleby. Um, then we have another writer of the movement, George Eliot. Uh, actually, George Eliot is a woman named Mary Ann Evans. She was publishing under a male pen. Um, I mean, uh, she took the name of a male so that her work would be taken more seriously. And of course, she is one of the most uh, important English novelists of the Victorian era. She wrote um, Middlemarch, A Study of Provincial Life. Um, she also wrote The Mill on the Floss, good novel. Um, and uh, the third writer that I picked is Leo Tolstoy. I mean, Leo Tolstoy wrote two of the greatest works of realism, War and Peace and Anna Karenina. Anyways, these are some of the writers of that movement, and I hope I made things clear for this um, lecture. You should know that we have spoken about both characteristics and let's say the purpose of the, the, that writing or the principle. Um, then we also gave a historical and social background of that kind of movement. Why did, did it emerge? Um, we went a little bit deeper into history, but I hope I made things clear. It was a necessity to do so, to make it easier for you to understand the reason of the emergence of this kind of movement. Anyways, if I have made things clear, that's more like it. If you have questions, feel free to comment or to ask them in the comments below. Um, otherwise, I tell you, see you in the next video. Peace.